Hello, I'm Cody Whipple with the Pennsylvania Fish and Boat Commission. Today we're joined by Dave Nyhart. Dave is the cold water unit leader for the Pennsylvania Fish and Boat Commission. And in this video, he's going to introduce you to safety. Remember, we are going to be electro fishing today, so it does involve electricity. Dave's gonna show you how we can best be safe while actually performing a wild trout survey. Well, thank you, Cody. So prior to us electro fishing, um, staff go through a, a rigorous training that involves um, many online courses that kind of uh, better prepare us for what to expect while electro fishing. And this is something that, that we take very, very serious. Obviously safety is uh, of utmost importance. Um, so prior to us even being out here, uh, not only do most folks have in the field experience, we've all accomplished or completed a electro fishing training course. So it's very important, as Cody mentioned, that we will be putting electricity into the water. And usually electricity and water, you're always taught, do not mix. Um, so it, it's very important that you're trained and you have a good understanding of, of how things work prior to actually getting in here electro fishing. So one thing I'll point out is that you'll see on this anode switch or anode pool, we have a safety switch. So anytime this safety switch is up, there's no power going to either the anode or the cathode. So um, anytime that you're in a situation where you feel uncomfortable, anytime that you feel that way, this switch comes up and it cuts all power to the backpack. And there's also on the back, which is currently off now, we have a main kill switch that can be pressed down at any time. And once that switch is, is pressed down, it immediately shuts power off to everything. A um, couple key things we always want to um, point out is, is usually, as you can see by the terrain, when we're electro fishing, it's not like we're walking up and down uh, a cabin, something that's level. This is very treacherous terrain. So you always have to be aware of your surroundings. And that's important because typically when there's two, three guys out here, um, you kind of get not so much always in close quarters. So you have to be aware of what everybody's doing because if somebody's behind you and they fall, they have to make sure that they let you know so you can turn the power off and, and vice versa if, if you're in front of you as too. You have to always be cautious of, of your surroundings to make sure that you're not only yourself, but your, your crew is safe. So once we're actually electro fishing, um, the current is strongest within close proximity of the, of the electrode within a couple feet. Um, but anytime that it's, it's little things that you have to watch out for, if you come up under a submerged log and part of the log is wet, it's coming out, even though the, the probe is not touching the log, if it's in close proximity to the probe, you may think that it's safe to touch that log, but you would be wrong. Metal objects, anything like that, you always have to be, be careful for your surroundings. Um, this is something that we take very, very serious. In my career, I've never had an incident where somebody's been seriously hurt by electro fishing. And I think that's a testament of truly a testament of how um, serious our staff takes this. So electro fishing may be may look fun, which it is, but everything has to be done in a safe manner to ensure that everybody uh, goes home the same way that they came here in.